Welcome back to another volume of Truly Disturbing Tales from Reddit. Today we're going to be narrating three new and settling stories taken directly from the platform. I encourage you all to sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy these terrifying personal accounts. Now, without any further delay, let's jump right in. I want to start this story off by saying that I'm a 20-year-old guy, and I'm a college student. I currently reside in the dormitories near my university. But it's worth noting that these dorms don't have any real affiliation with the school, besides their proximity. Sure, it's all students that live here, but there's very little oversight from the school itself. I've been here almost nine months now, but I had something happen two weeks ago that still sends shivers up and down my spine. The city in which I live and study is actually fairly close to my hometown. It's not rare for me to swing by my parents, enjoy a home-cooked meal, or do some laundry. But for the most part, I tend to keep to myself, stay in my dorm, handle my business, you know, kind of just do my own thing. So a few weekends back, I decide not to go home to my parents' house. Rather decide to hit up a bar with some dorm buddies for a few drinks. You know, typical weekend stuff. But since I had class the next day, I decided to bail out early and stumble back towards the dorm around 2 a.m. Totally hammered. Now here's the thing about our dorm. There's this rule that you're not supposed to let anyone in who you don't know. Plus the entrance door automatically locks itself as an added means of security which also means that you need a damn key to get in. So there I am, drunk as a skunk, staggering, struggling to open the door with my keys. And then it happens, in the blink of an eye, in an instant. As I finally get the door open, I spot what I can only imagine as a dude sneaking up from behind me in my periphery. He zooms right past me, making a beeline up the stairs. My first instinct was to say something, but man, exhausted and wasted, I just decided to avoid any drama and convince myself that maybe the guy lived in the dorms, perhaps on a different floor or something. You see, we barely interact with folks from other floors, so if he wasn't my neighbor, there really was no chance that I would recognize him. Fast forward a few days, I run into one of my buddies in the communal kitchen, and the poor guy looks like he's seen a ghost. Pale as a sheet, totally drained. So I ask him what was up, and that's when he spills the beans. Turns out, he's been hearing these weird noises in his room for the past few nights, freaking him out and keeping him from getting any decent shut-eye. We chat a bit more about this, and I volunteer to crash in his room with him. I mean, that's my bud, and I wanted to find out what the hell was going on anyway. So there I am, in the dead of night, curled up on an air mattress in my buddy's room, curious and anxious to catch these mysterious sounds for myself. And I have to say, they didn't disappoint. We heard some seriously unsettling noises coming from the walls of that building. But it wasn't like a neighbor stomping overhead or somebody knocking on a dorm door down the hallway. It sounded like these noises were coming from inside the walls. Naturally, we take this concern to the head of the dorms, explaining what we had heard. The next night, she marches into the room to see if the sounds are for real. Lo and behold, she hears them too. And now she's on a mission, checking all the adjacent rooms around us to find the source of those noises. But to no avail. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. Frustrated as she can be, she finally calls the cops. The police spend a good half hour investigating the dorm floor and my buddy's room. After tearing it apart, they find a half-concealed doorway hidden in the closet. Before even opening it, they surmise that that doorway leads directly into the walls in some sort of crawlspace fashion. The cops decide that the best course of action is to clear all the students from inside the dorms and have them head outside. That way, whatever is concealed behind that door would no longer be a threat to any students around. It took about 20 minutes to get all the students outside before the cops would breach that door. But what they found behind it is something that would inhabit nightmares. 
Turns out, the guy that I had accidentally let in the building had actually been living within the walls for at least a week. The authorities discover food, a chair, meth, among other drugs, beer. I mean, the guy had a whole setup. Not to mention, they found an 8-inch kitchen knife with him. Straight up horror movie stuff, like I said. The cops remove the man from the property, taking him down for trespassing as well as other charges. But it seems as if the damage was already done. Many students lost trust in the fact that these residences were safe and began leaving in mass. My buddy whose dorm this was moved the very next week, leaving me as one of the sole residents left on our floor. And it's been rough ever since. I have a hard time finding any rest in this place, knowing that some dude was lurking inside the walls. Every little sound, even if it's from another room, sends those same creeps down my spine. I don't think I can take it much longer. While my goal is to stay here through the end of the summer months, every bump in the night, every restless evening, pushes me one step closer to packing my bags and being gone. I'm very fortunate in the fact that my family lives right down the road. That way, when the time comes and I do have to leave this place behind, I have a house that I get to go home to, one that is safe and free of people lurking within the walls. This happened a few years ago, but it still rattles me when I think about it. For context, I'm a female, and at the time I was around 25 years old. I worked in an office of around 150 people. One day I received an email from a coworker, but I didn't recognize the name. The email basically said something along the lines of, I'm sorry if I did something to offend you. Given the situation, if you'd prefer never to see me again, I understand and will avoid you in the kitchen. I was extremely perplexed as I had no idea who this guy was, but I must have done something to offend him, right? I responded back along the lines of, I'm so sorry if I offended you. Sometimes I zone out and it can be perceived as if I'm rude, so I apologize if that's the case. After this response, he started getting irritated, basically denying my apology and acting passive aggressive about it. I wish I had kept a screenshot of these emails, but the entire misunderstanding had me confused as hell. So I sent him a message suggesting that we resolve this in person, which, looking back now, huge mistake. He agrees to meet me in the kitchen in the office at noon. I head there and I immediately see a tall, 30-ish year old guy who I've seen around but I don't think we've ever met. I explain to him that I apologize but I truthfully have no idea who he is, have never even met him before, and seriously don't want any issues. What happens after this absolutely concerned me. His face flushed bright red and he looked visibly angry. He was stuttering and denying that I didn't know who he was, before saying, you've been staring at me for months. When you made eye contact with me, you gasped and ran away. Okay, what the f I strongly denied this and told him that it was a mistake, yet he kept insisting that I had been staring at him for months and he could always see me doing it. Eventually. I realized that he couldn't see reason, and decided then to end the conversation. Upon some reflection, I also realized that it's possible he thought I was staring at him because when you walk in the hallway next to the kitchen, there is a room with glass windows at the end where a bunch of desks are. His desk would be right in the line of sight if I was walking down the hallway. I recall that he had a funny sticker on his desk that I would sometimes look at, but even this this seems like a huge stretch. Shortly after this incident, a coworker calls me into her office before slightly closing the door and asks me why I was talking to that guy. I explained the situation the best that I could. A look of fear and concern washed over her face. She told me that last year, that man had appeared in the office wearing nothing but a bathrobe, raving like a madman at people. And to her surprise, he was never reprimanded 
were fired for those actions. Had I been dealing with someone in the midst of psychosis? Was he dangerous? No clue, but I reported this ASAP to my manager, who took it seriously enough to tell it to the male co-worker's manager. I don't think he works there anymore. Thankfully, I left the company two weeks later, but I was extra cautious to not go anywhere near this dude for my remaining time there. And if I'm being honest, I was even cautious a few weeks after leaving. You never know what people are going through, but you also never know what people are capable of. So it's best to exercise caution wherever you can. What's the old saying? It's better to be safe than to be sorry. Today, I had an encounter that was rather interesting and slightly more creepy than interesting. I myself am not in the best of health, so I often have to find apps or workarounds for normal activities like shopping. So I use a grocery delivery service. The delivery people are generally very kind and ultra helpful. I've never felt unsafe interacting with any of them. But this morning, I received a delivery and the driver was a lovely gentleman with whom I've interacted with on multiple occasions. As we were going through the motions and exchanging small talk, I saw a man walking down the sidewalk towards my house. Rather nondescript young man, didn't really stand out or give me pause when I saw him from a ways away. I live on the corner of an L-shaped road, therefore from my porch, I could see him walking directly towards us. I heard him say something unintelligible as he neared my gate. I assumed he was talking on a phone or maybe to himself, so I ignored him and continued my exchange with the delivery man. Sidewalk man proceeded to walk up my driveway and from several feet away happened to ask, do you all have a pencil sharpener? I said, sorry, no, as I was confused by the question itself, although my response was a lie. The thing is, I have a pretty decent ability to read people's mannerisms. It's kind of difficult to explain. But the way he carried himself and the look on his face put me rather on guard. My brain was screaming, stranger danger. Delivery man and I just stood looking at him as he walked the rest of the way up to my porch and held up a broken pencil. If I had been alone, I would have called my dogs to the door and locked up, honestly. The situation just felt off. But the delivery man was there, and I remembered I had a freshly sharpened pencil not far from my door. So I popped inside, grabbed it, and presented it to Sidewalk Man, who was asking Delivery Man how we knew each other. Hmm, whatever. Surely this was a perfect solution to his problem, and we could all be on our way. But no. He looked at the new pencil that I had handed him, then looked at his own broken pencil and sighed deeply. He then said, Well, do you have a knife? Delivery man shuffled, nervously. I thought, how f***ing stupid do I look? This dude has got to be kidding. I do, in fact, have a very good knife that I will not be dumb enough to hand to a stranger for pencil sharpening purposes. No, I don't have one, I said. Delivery man to sidewalk man, with an unnerved tone. Hey man, is there something that I can help you with? Sidewalk man shook his head no, and looked annoyed simultaneously. After that, they both began to walk away, but Sidewalk man stopped, turned back, and with a crooked smile on his face, pointed to some sodas from my grocery order and asked, Hey, can I have one of those? I shot him a look, gave a very stern no, and locked my door immediately. I saw out my window that he and delivery man had a brief verbal exchange before walking away. I noticed delivery man did not drive off until sidewalk man was completely gone down the road. It may have been an innocent situation, but I'm not a trusting person. It seemed like sidewalk man was testing to see what he could get out of the situation. He was not keen to leave. It was almost like he was trying to draw it out and see how much I would interact with him, especially after he realized Delivery Man was not with me. I'm not naive, and my kindness is not to be mistaken for weakness, 
I'm going to be extra vigilant for a while in case he decides to show back up. But I'm interested. What do you all think?